once again, we are together for a night of fantastic learning. Today we're moving to the very end of the book where we have topic one, page 764, where we're going to continue with equations. And today we are going to solve multi-step equations using inverse operations and properties of equality. You're going to see a lot of the stuff we have been working on. However, this topic does have some new things that we need to look at. Our essential question. How many times must you isolate the variable and keep the equation balanced when solving an equation? I hope you can actually answer that question without having to go through the rest of this video. So let's get started with a quick review. Goals for solving multi-step equations are the same as solving for any equations. It doesn't matter what the equation looks like. We always do the same thing. We isolate the variable. We use inverse operations to undo the given operation, inverse operations in reverse order, is how we isolate the variable. Then we keep the equation balanced. We use properties of equality that says, hey, if I do it to one side, I'm going to do the same exact thing to the other side no matter what. All right? So let's just get busy with a couple of things that we need to discuss before we do our first example. It says each operation in an equation represents a step needed to solve the equation. So each goal is completed for every step needed to solve. There's your essential question right there. So the first two examples are going to be just what we've done before with one slight exception. We're going to have word sentences that we have to mark text and write an equation. It says the height in inches of a plant after t days is one half t plus six. After how many days is the plant 21 inches tall? So I always like to look at that question. After how many days? Well, it told us that t represents the number of days. So we're gonna, our answer better be a number of days. It told us that the height after these days is one half t minus Oh, excuse me, plus six, one half t plus six. And it wants to know how many days until it is, this is going to be that equal sign, 21 inches tall. So now we think about, well, what are we doing here? We're multiplying our t by one half, and then we're adding six. So to do the inverse operations in reverse order, we would first subtract six, and then, and then we would divide by one half. And we already know with our rational numbers, dividing by a fraction means multiplying by its reciprocal, its multiplicative inverse. So I'm just going to multiply by two because two over one is two. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract six from both sides. And I have one half t equals, well, what's 21 minus six? That's right, 15. And now, I already said I'm going to divide by 1 half, which is the same as multiplying by 2. So I'm going to take both sides, multiply by 2. I can see that simplifies out. t is now equal to 30. So my answer, 30 days. We just did stuff we've already done before, people. Pretty straightforward. One more time. It says 9 more than 6 times a number is negative 15. So the first thing I look at is that 9 more than. If it's 9 more than, then we're adding something to what already exists. In fact, we're adding 9 more than what already exists. And then it says 6 times a number. Well, I'm going to represent that with 6x. Is, that's an equal sign, negative 15. So now I can just put all that together. And you can put it together any way you want. Remember the Pro, uh, the commutative property says I can add a positive 9 with a positive 6x, or I just like to write my variable. Plus, if I follow 9 more than, it would be adding on the end. And that's equal to negative 15. So we take a look at what we're doing. We're multiplying the x by 6, and then we're adding 9. So the inverse operation would be to subtract 9 and then divide by 6. So I'm going to subtract 9 first, both sides. That helps me isolate the variable and keep the equation balanced. 6x is now equal to negative 24. We've mastered our integers. We know taking a negative 
and subtracting a positive becomes a negative plus a negative. Add them up, keep the sign. And then we divide by 6. So x is equal to negative 4. Very good. Here comes something that's just a slight bit different, ladies and gentlemen, with this topic tonight. And that is that we might have to combine some like terms before we solve the equation. So let's take a quick look at what we have here. In example 3, we have 5 minus 2m plus 4m equals negative 3. Well, my variable, I have 2m's. I, I don't want to solve for 2m's. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that m together. In fact, I'm going to combine those terms. So let's remember, terms include the number, the letter, the variable, and the operation symbol that comes before it. So I'm looking at these two terms here. They're on the same side of the equal sign. When they're on the same side, it's just like what we were doing with expressions. On the same side, what do we do? We just add them when we combine them. So negative 2 and a positive 4m gives me 2m. So now I have 5. That's a positive 2m. So I'm going to say plus 2m equals negative 3. Now recognize, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't talked about this before, but now is a good time. I have this constant 5 and this constant negative 3. Those are also like terms. However, they are on opposite sides of that equal sign, which means we have to do the opposite operation. When I combine the two m's on the same side, I did the same operation. I added. And when they're on opposite sides, I do the opposite operation. Regardless, I have an equation that looks like what we've talked about before. I'm multiplying by 2 and then I'm adding 5, so the inverse would be to subtract 5 and divide by 2. So I come over here and I subtract 5 from both sides to isolate, keep the great equation balanced. And 2m equals negative 8. And then I'm going to divide by 2. And when I divide by 2, m is equal to negative 4. Let's do this one more time. Combining like terms. They could be the variable terms or they could be constant terms. Notice, I have a negative 7.5 and I have a positive 2.1. Like terms on the same side. When they're on the same side, I do the same operation. So a negative 7.5 plus 2.1, what does that give me? That's right. It gives me a negative 4, excuse me, 5.4. Gives me a negative 5.4. So now I have 3.3x. Minus 5.4 is equal to negative 10. I could sit here and say I'm continuing to combine like terms if I really wanted to. I could say I have these two like terms that are on the opposite side. If they're on the opposite side, I do the opposite thing, which means I would add 5.4. Right? Well, a negative 10 plus 5.4 does give you a negative 3.6. Okay. I'm sorry, a negative 4.6. A negative 4.6. You notice I paused for a second because I thought, no, nah, I couldn't be right. And then I rethought about it, and no, it wasn't right. It is 4.6. And so now 3.3x is equal to 4.6. Now I'm in a one-step equation where I'm multiplying, so the inverse operation would be to divide by a 3.3. And negative 4.6 divided by 3.3 gives me a negative 1.3. Bingo. So combining like terms, looking at it in a little bit different way, but combining like terms, whether they're on the same side or opposite sides, and we're going to talk a lot about more of that later on. So here we go. Your first quick ride of the night. You say it's, uh, A says it costs $4 to enter the fair. Each ride costs $2.50. You have $21.50. How many rides can you go on? And negative 5x minus 2x plus 3x equals 9. After you're done with these quick writes, take a quick break, get a snack, say hello to your mama, and come back. Join us for our second video tonight.